Well, hey everyone, Hudson here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Nikon Z9 for action photography. And we're gonna delve in and we're gonna use the shooting banks, which covers shooting menu and video recording menu settings, as well as the custom settings banks, which record custom settings banks menu options. To set up that bank B as action, label it, and be able to quickly access action shooting settings. Now, in my first video, this is two of four videos on setting up the Nikon Z9, I go through all the menus. I talk a lot about the banks and how they work like bookmarks and how to back up all your camera's memory settings using load and save settings and how you should maybe not be formatting your memory cards but instead deleting the images off it to preserve those saved settings. Um, a whole bunch of stuff, customizing all the controls of the camera. We're gonna assume that you watched that video with me and you're jumping in with both feet from right where I was. You've already set up custom settings bank A and shooting bank A as your kind of normal knock around shooting mode, aperture priority. Um, you can tweak it to match your own preferred settings, but I walk through in those videos, that video, why I have the settings the way that I have them. And I think it's really important that you understand that, not just mimic it. Um, so let's jump in and, and let's talk about setting up custom setting bank B and shooting menu bank B for action and saving it, all right? Uh, if I jump into my I menu, I'm sitting in custom bank A and shooting bank A, just like we left, I've programmed that I menu like I showed you how to do so that shooting banks and custom banks are right front and center. Uh, and you can see if I touch on that, that's the standard, okay? So that's how I tend to switch modes around shooting in custom bank. It's real easy to get to through the I menu, whether you're looking through the viewfinder or whether you're on the tripod like I am right now. I'm gonna go into menu and remember, as I said, the photo shooting bank and video, or the, the shooting bank records both settings in the video recording menu and the shooting menu. And the custom settings menu bank records just things in the custom settings. So we're gonna go in, I'm gonna start with the custom settings banks and we're gonna copy our standard settings. We don't wanna to have to go through and change and tweak all those settings to make it uniform. Remember that each of these banks starts out a blank slate like camera defaults out of the box. So I'm gonna to go to the right, I'm gonna choose copy, and then I wanna copy those standard settings to B. I, I'm not gonna do that because I've already tweaked my settings, but you would just hit okay, or you'd tap the B or hit the okay button on the back. Uh, and then once we've done that, I wanna go into bank B, and I wanna actually rename it. And we're gonna call this action, A-C-T-I-O-N. I really like using the uh, touch screen to do this work. It's faster than scrolling around through all the letters. And I am gonna jump in here, hit that button twice to get to the parentheses, and then hit it again to get back to uh, this, to get to my letters. And I'm gonna say um, 4K space 24 and small p. P, I'll hit it one more time to get back to parentheses. Oops, I hit the wrong one. I'll just touch it with my finger, touch that parentheses, sometimes it's tricky. Hit the delete button and hit the correct one. And there we go, I say okay. So now I have renamed this with the video settings that I want as well as the, uh, oh wait, you know, well it doesn't matter so much in the custom settings. I usually do that in the, in the shooting bank, but whatever, I've put it in here. You know, I could go back in here. I don't usually put them in the custom settings bank because it's kind of, it doesn't have the video settings in it. It's really in the shooting bank. But you know, just shows you that I'm human too. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit delete. It's that easy, deet, 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 deet. Okay, so undone that, we wasted a little bit of your time. But no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button and now I'm in bank B. All right, so that being done, I'm gonna go up to the photo shooting menu or the video recording menu and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna. I'm in that A, I'm gonna move over to the right, I wanna copy the settings into B, I hit OK, boom, that'll get copied in. And then I wanna go in and select bank B, go back into it, go to the right, rename it, and here's where I'm gonna say A, C, T, I, O, N, space, parentheses, 4, K, space, and it's actually 60 frames a second because it's action. I think I wrote that wrong anyway. 60p, and then I'll get the closed parentheses. I'm doing better with that. Say, okay, go back out. All right, you can see I got 4K24, 4K60, all right? So now 
you know, I could easily jump in here and make sure that we're in those two settings. We're in bank B, shooting bank B, custom bank B. That's where we want to be. Let's go into our menus. In the shooting bank, what do I want to change for action? Well, this is where I'm going to set up that hybrid autofocus mode that I talked about in my approach in the scene video from Baja, where I'm actually going to recommend that you put wide area autofocus subject with wide area large subject autofocus on the shutter button to capture erratic moving subjects like birds in flight or fast moving close up action. And then you can hand that off to a 3D area tracking point that goes outside that wide area all over the frame once it's acquired by just hitting the AF on button in the back like you normally would with back button focusing. So let's talk about how we're gonna do that and change a, a couple of, a, one of the menu but, or one of the function buttons to make more sense for something you wanna do in action than with, with just general shooting. So I'm gonna come down to where I'm in my autofocus modes right here. I still wanna be in autofocus continuous to track moving subjects. And instead of being in that 3D tracking that I have just all the time knock around, I wanna be in wide area autofocus, all right? There it is, wide area. I like large, some people might like small, but I like the wide area large. Um, now, that's all I really wanna change in the photo shooting menu, all right? Let's just, I'm just gonna to touch the pencil mark here. I'm in custom settings bank B, which is action. And I wanna change some focus things. I'm gonna to touch the A focus settings. Um, and I wanna come down here and under AF activation, instead of AF on only for back button focusing, I want shutter plus AF on button, all right? Now that shutter button is gonna be the wide area autofocus, all right? Autofocus point persistence, that's important to leave on auto. We had that set when we did our first setup video for standard. That lets you hand uh, autofocusing off from one area mode to another area mode with two different button presses. It's important to make sure that it doesn't choose a new point. It's gonna keep the point that's already locked in and handed off into that new mode. Um, and then I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna hit the left arrow to just kind of go back in, and I wanna customize my controls a little bit. I'm gonna customize my shooting controls, and the big one I wanna customize is the AF on button. And instead of it just being AF on, like it was in our A bank, our custom setting A bank, I want it to be autofocus area mode plus AF on, and in the sub menu, I'm choosing 3D tracking. Boom, there it is, all right. There's one more thing I'm gonna change, function two button, which we were using as a bracketing burst. We're not gonna really be doing bracketing while we're shooting out, uh, action. We're not gonna shoot them differentially exposed. But it is handy to be able with that, that ring finger button, that middle button out in front of the camera, to choose the area mode, to flip between full, full uh, FX and DX mode. So whether you're in full frame or crop mode, and in crop mode, you get a deeper buffer. You still get a 24 megapixel file. You still get a big frame filling view of the action, but it brings your subject a little closer up. It'll turn the reach of this 100 to 400 millimeter lens through your viewfinder to look more like a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Um, and with the Z9's amazing resolution, it really is a beneficial mode when your action's a little further away than you wish it was with a long lens. Uh, it's kind of like having a D500 in your back pocket while you're shooting with the Z9. Kind of makes my D500 up for sale, to be honest with you. Um, so <laughs> you get more resolution from this than you would with that, and you get a full frame view just like you would through the D500. So I'm choosing that choose image area, and I can easily flip modes. So if I, if I come out here and I'm uh, looking around at the studio, for example, I'm also gonna change my mode. I'm gonna choose mode up here. Uh, I could choose, you know, in our normal mode, we would have probably been an aperture priority if you're like me for your bang around mode. Um, I'm gonna choose shutter priority mode. I'm gonna make sure my shutter speed's up around 1250th of a second to start. Remember, we use the, uh, the, the, the shooting bank extended menus on, so it's gonna save this data. When you flip back into it, it's gonna be at shutter priority at whatever shutter speed you left it at. Auto ISO is turned on. Um, I can move this wide area box around. If I was to hit my shutter button, it's locking in on you guys in the camera. If I suddenly switch and I hit the AF on button, it's gonna hand that off to a 3D tracking point which can go all over the frame and it's got it locked. See how that works? Super, super cool. So now, you know, we've set it into shutter priority, 1250th of a second. We've got our autofocusing mode set up. You know, I was going to iMenu to change these around. If I wanted to flip between DX and FX, it's really fast. It's that button right under my ring finger and I just click the back wheel. See that? Now I'm seeing 
the, uh, the DX view of the world and you guys. All right, super cool, really easy to do. That's great to have for action, all right? So that's all I'm doing for my action autofocus setup and, and using the custom setting B and um, the uh, shooting menu B for that. You can see if I go into change my custom settings, I've got standard or I've got action. I can touch at. If I want to change my shooting menu, I've got shooting menu, standard or action. Oh, the one other thing I was going to show you was if I go into the video setup menu, all I'm doing in changing that to the 60 frames a second is under the frame size and frame rate. I went from 24, which is my filmic kind of cinema look, up to 60 frames a second, which just captures action a little bit more smoothly. So it kind of makes sense to put that video mode in alongside the action shooting parameters in the shooting menu. And that's it. Aside from the fact that we talked about saving and loading those menu settings. We're gonna go into the function four button that I had you program, at least this is how I program it to access the top of my menu. Run down here to save and load menu settings, save menu settings, and now we've locked in to that saved menu setting file on our Compact Flash Express card, everything we just did. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna do something really similar, but we're gonna do it for landscape, and then in the video after that, we'll do it for Astro. Oh, hey. And thanks to everybody for watching this. Make sure, you know, if you're new to this channel, check out my Thursday videos. They're not just about gear and super technical stuff. We also get into um, working with other photographers, expanding your creative vision, trips, and exciting things to keep your interest in photography. We have group meetings from that community on at least a monthly basis where we get together in a big live get together free meeting and talk about all things photographic, do image reviews, do Q and A sessions with other photographers that work with me teaching workshops. Um, and again, all the gear that I use and recommend is available on my website at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. I link everything, I keep those links updated. Those links help me out and help support the work that I do in this channel. So thanks so much for watching everybody.